Death be not proud. What's up, you bundles and sticks? Holy Diver here, and uh, this is a good day. Uh, little announcement first. I have to tell you that I'm no longer using Facebook. I logged out on my cell phone, and uh, when I went to log back in, they wanted me to provide photo ID of proof of who I was. And uh, I'm not a good little slave, so I'm not going to give them any kind of ID so that they know who I am. I don't want Facebook knowing what state I live in, I, that there's a reason. I used an alias, and uh, there you go. So uh, with that, you know, I don't think that anybody should give Facebook their address, their uh, street name, or any of that stuff. That, I mean, Facebook has no right to ask you for a library card, a student ID, or your driver's license. And so that's why I'm no longer going to be on Facebook. They have no right to that information, but you know, I mean, this is how they plant adverts based on where you live. And they can pull up an advert and be like, oh, this guy lives in a red state. Send him a couple Bernie Sanders advertisements. And that's how they really did influence an election. They openly admitted to that. So if you're a good little slave, continue using Facebook and uh, good luck with that. But if you're a 25 year old man and you live in the States, log the fuck off and tell Zuck the Cuck and Google to take their data mining operation and shove it right up their asses. Uh, other than that, if you want to get in touch with me, just leave a comment. I get, I, I, I'm able to respond to the YouTube comments a lot easier uh, because I get a, a better notification on my cell phone than I did from Facebook anyway. Uh, I can check my feed to see if I have any outstanding comments and then uh, we can go from there. So if you want to message me, use uh, use uh, use the YouTubes, and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm just I'm not going to use Facebook. I don't need Facebook. Facebook never really put any large amounts of subscribers into my coffers. Uh, most people who run Facebook groups are maniacal assholes, like ancient and medieval. That's got to be the worst Facebook group on the face of the planet. Like the guy who runs it can't have a showcase video. You're spamming me. Can't have a battle report. You're spamming me. You painted an army, holy diver. My figures are still gray. And you got to think of the psychological condition of some of these people who start Facebook groups. We, we worked really hard to have a, uh, a relationship with Warlord Games and other ancient miniature companies. Like, really? What relationship do you have? Are you getting free shit? Are they sending you money? Alright then, fuck you and your Facebook group. There you go. They're not sending you money. Uh, they're not sending you free shit. So, you know, they might, but, you know, I, I know you're not getting shit for your little fucking group there. So you can take your good old boys club and shove it up your ass. So, with that said, let's get into it. Uh, the French. Uh, 48 crossbowmen, 115 foot knights, 80 French peasants, uh, 6 French command models, and then... 52 French cavalry numbering some 301 models. Uh, this is a, there are a lot of really easy color schemes that you can do with this, you know. So just looking at this here, you ha you can see how they were painted and everything. This is the French uh, infantry at Agincourt, but they can also be the Scotch, and then they have a nice little color sheet. You get a lot of these things in the boxes. And I copied all kinds. Some of my, uh, a lot of my, pre a lot of my peasants look like this, 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 and this. I actually, I used all of them. I used all of them, you know. So, and then uh, you get a bunch of free flags and everything. And you get a little in the uh, infantry at Agincourt. This isn't the foot knights at Agincourt. You get, you get a couple of knights. Not, not too many of them. But uh, you, you have different. Uh, uh, colors that you can use and everything and basically this is before the time that armies were unified colors uh, you, how you appeared would basically be tied to how rich you were so there's that with with the French and then you had the uh, the archers a lot of a lot of the English archers are a huge mix mix and match of colors and everything you got you got black and like dark brown you have black and red uh, blue and white and red, and then uh, red and cream, uh, red and cream, and then you had some, uh, let's see here, you, you, you did get some knights in there with that kit and everything, and uh, 
you, you get a guide to everything. And I, I really just kind of did this project quick. I, I didn't decorate a lot of shields until I got to the end. Then I started to decorate shields. If you notice my, uh, some of my Genoese crossbows, they just have a straight up metal shield, nothing on the front of it. It looks lazy as all hell, whereas the other three units are blue and yellow. So, uh, you, if you use this color chart, it'll help you out immensely and uh, it's really easy to freehand a white cross on some of these guys like that and then let's see here this is the uh, newer kit the uh, knights at Agincourt and everything and uh, basically the big long furly sleeves that's a trait of the continental knights so this guy could very easily be French and then uh, you have various various versions of knights the feather on top of the helmet is a continental knight thing whereas the English uh, it says here right an English knight from the 1420s usually he has adopted a continental fashion with a loose sleeves by this period the English normally preferred to wear their armor uncovered that means they didn't put any fabric over their armor um, let's see here you go back to this that would be like fabric over your plates and everything. Normally English knights didn't do that. Uh, with the As far as color schemes for mounted cavalry uh, on the French, I did a lot of blue and white, blue and yellow and blue. Uh, I think those colors clash really well together. And then for the English I just chose dark red and white uh, so that I would be able to easily distinguish them because again, nobody's really wearing a uniform. And uh, I wanted the English to look a little bit dirtier than the French. Uh, because after uh, Half Lore, uh, King Henry went on a tour of the countryside as a display of power. And he marched through a lot of uh, France unchecked. And then uh, he was finally uh, cut off at Agincourt, and he had the French army march marching up behind him, and then he had to fight. And by this time, you know, I'm sure everything that they were, every scrap of clothing they had was covered with some kind of grime on it. So. That's this, and then this is the uh, Knights Men at Arms kit at Agincourt. Again, you get a good, really, this is all Perry miniatures. Uh, you get a really good painting guide, and a lot of this is really simple. You should be able to get a lot of these guys, the Foot Knights, really, really quick, as long as you're not shy. If, you're wor if you want to do like a huge job, like, uh, I don't know, uh, th this guy right here who's like dark yellow and dark blue. It'll take you a little bit longer, but it's all based on what you want. Uh, there are some libraries that you can use right here. This one, that would take you a little bit, and this one. But I don't know why you would do that, because painting a massive collection, this, this encompasses the work over three years. I did sub a little bit of this out. I'll point out some of those units as we go through the showcase and everything. And uh, basically... It, it, it's it, it's rewarding, but then again, it's not that rewarding when you didn't get to the model count that you thought you would. Uh, I, I never count models until I'm done, until I reach a point in my head where I think that I'm done. So that's usually how I do a, do a project. Let's go to the damage toll on the English. For the English, we have 91 archers. That's uh, because I used unit fi fillers. Uh, if, you, if you notice, the first rank on every archer unit is cavalry stakes. Uh, the cavalry stakes represent something that the English uh, used pretty heavily, uh, simply because you don't want to take a charge from knights, and uh, it, they can close the, they can go past the the arc of fire that at extreme range very quickly. It's not hard for a, if you're a football field away, or if you're half a football field away, it's not hard for cavalry to charge you as you knock up another arrow and loose it. It's not hard. Those, Horses move very fast, even with knights on top of it, and then they hit you with lances. It's bad news bears. So the cavalry stakes is an obstacle because horses, again, will not go through an obstacle that they, that they cannot discernibly see a spot to get through. So uh, I, I imagine that the English, uh, according to Keegan, that would be very, very good at picking up the stakes picking up all the stakes and then planting them as needed. And uh, they probably had guys who detailed for this, They guys with mallets who would hurry up, move the stakes. You didn't even need to sharpen them just so long as they were there. 
And if you were unlucky enough to fall on one hard enough, it's going to either break your ribs or it's going to go into you a little bit. But uh, you get those things hammered into the ground and then you can whittle off the front of it. This is something that I tried outside. It took me all of uh, four minutes. And then uh, I bet you you could get that time to, to plant two. It took me four minutes to plant two and sharpen two. And uh, I, I bet you can get that time down to one and a half very quickly, especially if you detailed every third guy to do it while everyone else keeps watch with their bows. So, uh, English Billmen, you have 40 of them, two units of English Billmen. Those are the guys with halberds. And then you have English Foot Knights. They number 79. I know it should be 80. One of... One little, one little unit filler in, a, in those two units. Uh, English Cavalry, uh, this is Light Cavalry, six models, and then English Mounted Knights, four stands, 28 models, and then six English Command. I have King Henry, and he's the only one on horseback. I need to get one more. I'm going to paint up one more guy and uh, at some point later on, and he's going to be my other English Commander on horseback. Anyway, with that said, let's go look at the army. So going from uh, my left to right here, we got three units of English archers. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these and then you have like arrows and you have the stakes out in front and everything. And then not to mention you also have uh, a mixture of miniatures. You got some fire forge, you got some more of the roses guys in there. Not to mention mixed in with the English army at Agincourt. A lot of this stuff came, the English army at Agincourt came a lot later as a box set when I started this project and I was already buying some met and I was already gonna go with these guys until that box came out so that's uh, that's the so I went with six regiments uh, and I based everything loosely for Warhammer Fantasy Ancient Battles I always do this so that I have some flexibility I do have some flexibility in the way that I move them and nobody's gonna care that I'm got the stakes out in front of me I one of the things I am gonna do before I have a really big game with a friend of mine is I'm going to paint at least two feet of these so that I have them as an obstacle out in front of me uh, just as a terrain feature so that is one thing I'm gonna be doing and I'm also gonna be taking some of these loose arrows here and we've already decided that those really make really really good casualty markers so I'm gonna decorate a couple of those so I have to get one more box of knights just for the arrows or, and stuff like that. I mean one more box of archers just for the arrows and stuff and some extra stakes uh, let's move over here just a little bit and look at the center of the army now you you have a uh, right here some of the bill men you can see that these guys are a mixture of colors just like on the uh, charts that I showed you and everything uh, a couple of them aren't armed with bills they got the little uh, messed up little shield and uh, the buckler shield and a hand weapon but most of them have uh, the malls or, or the uh, the halberds and everything and then right here you got some uh, English foot knights and some of those guys who had a lot more armor are War of the Roses. There's like one or two of them in there. And then you have some uh, skirmishers. These guys will be in Hail Caesar game. I'll just say they're in open order. But uh, I really like the way they look on a multi-base. Uh, I, I went with that. And uh, it just keeps it clean. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, it's easier to move, in my opinion. And then, of course, in back here, I only did one flag. I kind of feel bad. I, I, I've got to do one one more. I, I think I can do, yeah, right here. Let's see. I'm just going to move real quick. I can do two more flags. I'm going to get two more English flags on these guys at some point. Uh, the, uh, I, I got lazy. What can I say? And then, so four stands of English knights on horseback. And then we got the rest of the English foot knights right here. And then the last unit of Billman. A lot of these guys are the Pewter Sculpts by Perry. And the Pewter Sculpts by Perry are awesome. I recommend any of the Pewter line from Perry because all of those miniatures are really, really, really good miniatures. You get a quality miniature from Perry. So, And, uh, you know, the Perrys have been in it the longest as far as sculptors are concerned you know they, they sculpted all, they sculpted all of the Bretonians they sculpted all of the dwarves they sculpted they, they sculpted all, all of the wood the last thing they sculpted before they left the company was uh, the wood elves not the newer wood elves that are plastic but the old line of wood elves and then they also sculpted the uh, what do you call it the Lord of the Rings miniatures 
But True 28 uh, and uh, their metals are just really solid. If you've ever had, if you have any of the metal Lord of the Rings guys, they're just really, really solid miniatures. So let's move over just a little bit. We got uh, the command models right here. Uh, this one my friend painted and uh, he did the little squire guy for him and everything. This is Henry V, of course, and then right here we just got some random commanders and everything. Just uh, I, I got to get some uh, 40 millimeter bases at some point and uh, mock up uh, some squares on those 40 millimeter bases so that I can put them in and out and I just it looks better. Or I might just make new commanders, but I might commission that to be done because you know. I'm tired. <laughs> I, I'm tired of working or something like that. But uh, light cavalry, uh, the hobbleers. Uh, these guys would get off their horses, fire longbows, get back on, and uh, try to ride around. And if they did, and if a flank charge did present itself, that's what they would do. Or they would be good scout regiments and everything. Just guys who were uh, mounted sergeants, really good at, really good with weapons and everything. And uh, and they would be the reconnaissance for the English army because when you're in foreign territory it's always good to scout ahead and uh, but a lot of armies did that you know they would maneuver 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 scout around skirmish until they could deploy on a battlefield to fight one another and then let's see here Coming over there, we got the last uh, group of English archers, three more regiments. Uh, lo this one was commissioned by my friend. He did that one. And uh, my friend, however, uh, there's actually a couple more. The, the, these one, two, three, these three guys, these four guys in back, and then these ones right here were me. And then this whole u unit over here was me. My friend actually painted his 100 Years War collection, and he has a model count of 1139. We'll get more into that in the summation though. So, uh, gotta get some more uh, Ironheart Artisan trays, but uh, these ones have been white glued to their trays and they're probably gonna stay this way. I have to paint the trays brown and white glue a lot of the guys to the trays so that uh, it'll just look good and uh, it's done. So, uh, I also prefer the old Warhammer static holds 20 so if you have any of those hit me up in the comments and send them to me I could really use them so uh, that, that that basically sums up the English uh, let's get a look at the uh, Knights here again these guys were the later project the English Knights they basically got done last uh, so you're looking at all of these cow all of this cavalry here and back was some of the last stuff that I did uh, I wanted the I, I, I went into this project knowing that the French had to outnumber the English so uh, whatever what so if I did five units of men at arms for the English that means I'd have to go through and do ten uh, uh, six units of men at arms for the French or something like that I only did four units of night of foot knights so I went and I did two more so it would always be beating the English by two, whatever they had. So, as you can see, I went with the dark red and white, and uh, I, I went with the sleeves on some of these guys here and everything. And uh, just, th they painted up really quick because it's a little easier to do uh, the red than it is the blue. You don't really have to highlight the red as much as you do the blue because sometimes if the, when you do, when you use dark tone, when you use uh, strong tone on blue, you have to put a little bit more blue to bring it out. So let's go over and take a look at the French. So here we are arrayed for battle with the French. Uh, this was one of the first units I did right here, hence they don't have any yellow. Sure it looks lazy, but there's really no, once you've done something, there's really no reason to ever go back. Uh, eventually things break, and then when things break, that's when you go back. And so. I've already uh, determined how I'm going to do replacements. The reason why I did this predominantly as individuals rather than multi-bases is because I might I want to get a lot of use out of this collection. So as as like stands like this break or something, I am going to adopt a uh, this kind of regiment, just individuals in in uh, in movement trays of ten, and that's what I'm going to do. So basically. We have 48 crossbowmen, 
Uh, the I, I'm just going to figure that the uh, yellow ones are my Genoese mercenaries, and uh, the the uh, the base unit right here, they're just common French militia. So if I wanted to, I I could say that uh, they're they're part of the peasant count, but not really. So 48 crossbowmen, and then let's move over to. I uh, started in the center. We have the uh, very first two regiments of knights that I painted and everything. They finally got a flag. I've got to get one more model out, maybe, and give them a flag. I want my French, I want my French uh, knights to have flags now. Flags look good, so especially uh, after I figured out how to do them, uh, they can be a bitch. So let's see here. Let's move over to the knights on foot next. Uh, okay, so starting here, this is 115 foot knights. I did use a unit filler right here, and uh, he represents six infantry. I just kind of like, you know, I don't know what I was thinking, you know, I was just like, you know, keep, uh, keep the model count down. Don't go too high. And as you need more individuals or something, or if you need to fix something, this gives you some flexibility because stuff does break and you know, when, when I build an army, I always think about how I'm building it. It's got to be sturdy. And then I'm always thinking about how am I going to fix it and what's the easiest way. And having them all as individuals it, it is really easy because I can replace a guy really quick, a lot faster than I can a multi-based unit like this in back here. So, uh, the English right here. So, uh, as the English uh, cavalry stands wear out, uh, you know, it's not, it's not hard. When you've, when you've painted at least 50 of the Agincourt uh, mounted cavalry, once you get past that first 50, you know, or close to 50, it, it, it becomes secondhand nature. So uh, basically, uh, just uh, think about how you're going to repair it as you build your army. And that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, these two right here were not done by me. They were done by my friend. So I, I want to say that about... Uh, 15 percent maybe less than 15 percent was was done by him. It could be five percent. I don't know. But uh, these were uh, these were the War Games Foundry 100 Years War range. Really good sculpts. Really awesome. I like them. The metal miniatures you get chunky pewter miniatures a lot better than spindly plastic miniatures. So as things break. I will be replacing them with uh, War Games Foundry for the infantry and everything. I would much rather have War Games Foundry because it's just a lot easier to deal with pewter than it is plastic. You don't have to assemble pewter for as long as you do plastic. So six regiments, mostly all in blue, dark blue, light blue. Uh, some are blue and uh, vomit green for some reason. It's just a one of the colors that I chose, really easy, took the path of least resistance, and it was something that I copied from one of the charts. Uh, right here, those guys with the two flags in back. Let's just zoom in real quick. Up, 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 up. Right. These were the last to be done by me, so you got a lot of vibrant yellow, a lot of uh, white, and then not to mention you have the flags and the decorated movement trays, which I've become accustomed to using. I really like decorating movement trays. The only problem with that is, is that you have to, you use a lot of brown. And let me tell you, I buy more scorched brown than any person I know. I swear to God, more scorched brown than any person I know. Plus, this is a lot easier to do than a multi-base because, uh, you have to. I I I I did the revi the video on retreat multi basing. I'll link that and I'll I'll link that video below about how you do cavalry units and everything and how you work your way way toward. Uh, you start at one top corner and then work your way to the left or right, and that's retreat multi basing. But uh, those were the last ones to be done with, like me. And then I got one here. It's got a yellow saddle. Somehow he ended up being like my favorite. Let's see if we can get a shot of him in the mud. Ended up looking really good here. And uh, I just really like that one for some reason. I don't know. Uh, there's a couple others that have yellow that I think have a better paint job, but I just like that one particular knight for some reason. I have no idea. I just It all goes back to him. You can say I'm not technically done. I have to uh, clear coat this army, uh, clear coat these last 20 guys, but I'm close enough. 
to do the video at least. And then uh, in this unit is a filler. Uh, this is just an ornamental model. Uh, you have uh, from the play Henry V, you would have uh, that's Montjoy, the Herald of the French. And uh, he, he's the guy who comes up before the Battle of Agincourt and he's like, Once more I come to know thee, King Henry, for thy ransom thou wilt now compound before thy most assured overthrow. And, uh, and then at the end he comes back up to, to King Henry and King Henry's like, Comest thou again for ransom? He pulls him off of his horse. He's like, No, great king, I come to thee with charitable license so that we may book our dead and rove over this bloody field and separate our princes from our common men, all the while soaked in mercenary blood. It's a really good movie, 1989, starring Kenneth Branagh. Uh, you know, I don't know why... Uh, why he chose to be Henry V, I think that they could have chose uh, someone a little bit, I, th I think they should have chosen an American actor, as for uh, guys who could have done Henry V, I think Kurt Russell would have been a good Henry V, actually. A little nutty, but I think he would have did a, a better job than Branagh any day of the week, because, you know, he was Jack Burton, he can do anything. But uh, uh, Lawrence Oliver, he, you can actually watch the Lawrence Oliver version on YouTube for free, and I recommend that one because Lawrence Oliver was an acting legend. But yeah, that's Montjoy the Herald, just a unit filler, uh, nothing special. But I put him in there, and I've got two knights, so not complaining there. We'll work our way over here. Let's zoom back out. As you can see there, we got two units of French knights on multi bases, right here and here. My friend did the flag for me, and he actually painted uh, these three guys in back here. And I think, nope, that's me. These, but you can't tell. Uh, I, I, I basically, when I get, when I ask him to do something. Uh, I, I, I give him, ma oh, he did this guy right here too. I give him masters, so I'll paint up a bunch of miniatures, and then I'll, those are those are what I call the masters. He'll copy the masters, and then he'll do he'll do some of the work for me, you know. And it it takes the stress off of me, and that way I can move on with other projects when I discover a new shiny and everything. So I want to I want to thank take the time to thank him and Kahuna Studios because Kahuna Studios did all the base colors on some of my foot nights. So. Uh, uh, it, I'll, I'll link Kahuna Studios below, and then uh, after uh, my my friend Big Mike at Kahuna Studios would finish with the dry brushing, I fixed the lines and washed the miniature and put grass on it. That's all I did. But you know, I wanted I wanted to get into this really quick, and then I went back and forth on Romans, Celts, and it's not really a good way. I think what I n next time you just knowingly need to focus on the bigger pictures, and I, I think if I had done that. And if I had known that my friend at the time was going to get into the 100 Years War, uh, I would have my model count would have been much higher, and it would have been most of the table. So we have the French peasants right here. These guys were originally going to be my Scotch with the spears and everything, but I just decided to make everyone Paris City Guard, and that's why a lot of them ended up in this blue color. I was going to use the uh, the blue color for, and then I was going to put that white X that the Scotch wear at this time period, but you know, the worst thing to be in the 100 Years War would have been uh, Scottish pikemen. Basically, you're there and the English have longbows and you, you have little or no armor because you come from the same island and you're just as poor as the guys you're fighting. And uh, so if I were to do a Scotch division, I would need 40 of, 40 of these guys right here with the spears then I would need my two units of archers, and then I would have a big, huge brick of Scottish foot knights, and that's probably how I'd do that. But uh, last but not least, we have some of the uh, French commanders. Uh, just uh, these were the first two that I painted, and then this one was uh, done up by my friend. And uh, as were uh, these two command models, you know, just. It's okay to give your command models away to somebody to do because, it, again, save yourself some of the insanity. But that's the entire French army, 301 models. I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping for a collection that would number uh, 650 when I was topped out. So That's basically the showcase, and uh, I'll give you a quick glimpse of things to come here. Uh, these are my Pike and Shot English Civil War guys, and I've got my unit of lobsters right there. So, 
Uh, got a got the got the last six of those built. Going to use three units of cavalry. But these guys really easy to paint. So if uh, you're a beginner and you're getting into the hobby for the first time, I kind of recommend Pike and Shop because the figures. The plastics done by Warlord are really good. So look for a video on uh, Carassier coming out soon and uh, how to do those guys because uh, really, really, really solid kit. Really happy. Well, there you have it, Internet. A uh, full collection of 100 Years War miniatures. You know, when people talk to me about, like, skirmish games and everything, I, I really, to me, most skirmish games are for scrubs. That's basically the long and the short of it. When I do a project, I think on a grandiose scale, and I don't stop on that project until I'm done, for the most part. But this project I've been back and forth on, on for three years. One thing I do not recommend is Celts, Romans, English, and French, kind of all at the same time. But I got real big into Ancients, I got real big into Medieval, and I just, uh, I, you know, you just... Uh, want to kind of focus on one collection at a time so you know I mean it, it makes it a lot easier if you have a friend who's going to be painting your opposition and so uh, that's why I'm doing pike and shot is because I have to paint one army which is nothing I'll, I'll probably I mean it's uh, here we are in 2020 I'll probably paint two to three armies this year or add to armies I already have and that in and of itself me adding to an army will equate to another army so when I think about like this year after Pike and Shot, I'm probably going to do a lot of Macedonians. I'm going to get my cavalry up and everything, and uh, I, I'm going to be probably going with Warlord with a uh, War War Games Foundry on those, simply because uh, I found a hack that I can use to make these things a lot better and more durable, especially with the spindly little metal spears. Uh, you have those Fire Forge long spears that you can get so I'm, I'm going to be using plastic on metal which will work a lot better very easy to repair so you won't have like boxing glove hands by the end of the project and that is always the worst thing is having to fix uh, a spear that you glue into the arm of a cavalryman but you know I mean this uh, this project really does separate the uh, the boys from the men you know, I can see a bunch of people right now watching The Weekender, Beasts of War. Oh, look at me. I'm, I'm, worn, I'm Wiggle Tits Warren Johnston, everyone. My tits are so big and I, because I've never done a push-up in my entire life. I've probably never even painted a miniature, but I'm sure as fuck going to talk about it. I've never... God damn. Or a Geek and Sundry again. It's just like, we have the idea of miniature war gaming, but we don't really miniature war game, you know? So, you know, I mean, like I said... You know, you, you try to appeal to a wider audience, and I just like the niche videos. So, uh, with that, my friend painted 1,139 models between French and English. That's a collection. That's a war gamer, in my opinion. Somebody who can do that for the love. And he was originally going to do 15 millimeter, but he knew I had 28. And one day I came into the shop, and he just had more models than I already He had as many models as I had painted already. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, i got to get to work. And uh, I went back and forth and I kept doing things and now that I'm kind of at project zero again Because the pike and shot stuff will uh, it won't be that hard I'll be able to average one guy on horseback a night, which is where you want to be uh, You know, that's kind of where I want to be for a little while plus uh, I have to think of a paint scheme for my infantry real quick, but that's where I'm at anyway uh this, is the, this has been the showcase video, and if you don't see me, uh, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. Uh, that's the best way to get in contact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, but leave a comment if you want to get in touch with me, and uh, stay metal, my friends. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack!